Um, to ask the Minister um, for an update on the CDNT recruitment campaign, be part of our team, be part of our lives. The number of people who have been recruited to the CDNTs through this recruitment campaign, uh, the current number of staff vacancies nationally in CDNTs, and if you make a statement. Earlier on. So with regard to the CDNT recruitment campaign, be part of our team, be part of their lives, this campaign has closed across the, the CHOs and to date 190 job offers were, have been made and 55 individuals are currently in the final stages of, of recruitment. Funding has been provided for additional posts to enhance the capacity on the CDNTs and to shorten the waiting times in recent years. The funding amounts to a total of 800 whole time equivalent posts including an additional 175 uh, therapy system posts which were approved in budget um, 2024. However, uh, and as we all know from the 2022 staff census, there are over 700 um, vacant whole time equivalent posts in our CDNT and it hasn't changed much for the 2023 um, staff census either. So the HSE have been asked to conduct another CDNT recruitment campaign in the coming months, which will ensure that there is continued recruitment to the CDNTs, which will in turn hopefully strengthen the CDNTs provision of services. And it will be important that the HSE identifies and applies any points of learning from the first campaign. And the HSE is operating a very competitive global market for healthcare talent as there are significant shortages of qualified healthcare professionals across the globe. The HSE community operations disability services working collaboratively with the CDNT lead agencies and the CHO level to promote the CDNT as a workplace of choice in a competitive in employment and market. 93 CDNTs are aligned with the 96 CHNs across the country and are providing services supports to children from the age of from birth to 18 years. So the CDNTs are currently providing services and support for 46,000 children. However, there are significant challenges on them, including um, staff vacancies, the growth in the numbers, and the demand on assessment of need. And I can come back in on the second point. Yeah, uh, I know you mentioned the staff census of 2022, and then the 2023 one has yet to be published. So I, I'm wondering, have you a date for that? I know it was. Um, delayed because of the industrial action, mm -hmm. but I'm just wondering is there a date for that just to, to be able to compare across the board. Um, I suppose I particularly want to focus in on my own constituency of Cap and Monaghan. Um, the team in Monaghan, which is a HSE run team, had a vacancy rate of around 40% roughly, and the Cabin team, which is a Section 39 organisation, a 60%. So I'm just wondering, uh, you did indicate to me before that in this recruitment campaign there was about 80 applicants in the CHO1 area. I'm just wondering, have you figures on how many of those people have actually been offered positions within that area, or even better, within the Cabin and Monaghan area. Um, and I suppose I'm wondering as well, when people, how long is this, is this recruitment time taking? Because um, I know there's sometimes there's significant delays with Coro, and I'm just wondering if those have been addressed, um, because I think time is of the essence. We're all hearing from families who are, are looking for services and not getting them at the moment, and, and the recruitment needs to be, to be beefed up as quickly as possible. Uh, thank you, um, Deputy. So the date for the publication will be in the next two weeks okay. um, for the staff census. I don't have a specific figure for, for Kevin Monaghan, but what I do know is for CHO1, there was 88 had ex done an expression of, of interest um, for the CHO1 area, which of course covers, covers the Kevin Monaghan um, piece of it. Uh, and in relation to what measures are being taken, so the National Team of Development uh, of uh, the programme, they are looking, they are actually holding lunchtime um, webinars. They are actually confined senior grade competitions are going on, marketing the CDNT as a workplace of choice, HSC, HR engagement with graduates in person and via webinars, recording of CDNT staff and parents of benefits of working with it. But they are also doing student sponsorship programmes and additional. 20 senior clinical psychologist training placements, confined senior grade competitions, and a recruitment plan for 462 sorry, health and social care by the end of 2024. So the HSE themselves have set their own target that they wish to achieve in the health and social care profession of, uh, of 462 um, this year, Senator Deputy. Doctor. 
Just in, in relation to graduates, or your, you mentioned graduates there, have the numbers entering these professions, like in, in college, increased and has it increased dramatically? And are we seeing an increase of people graduating and staying in Ireland to work then? I know you mentioned earlier the apprenticeship model, which I think is an excellent model as well. So it's just, you know, it's just, are, we, are we seeing a lot more people going into those um, courses, or is it, is it proven difficult to get people into those? Or have, I know some people have said the points can be extremely high, uh, and it would be interesting doing the likes of OT, but you know it's far too high in the Leaving Cert to, to get into those courses. I mean, I'm dealing with families every week, again, who are really being messed around. I mean, I'm dealing with families who are being referred from primary care, then over to the CDNT, then to CAMS, and you know they don't know where they're going. And even the ones who are with the CDNT, they're not getting services. And I'm constantly emailing, I'm not even getting responses anymore. I mean, I have one mother on to me and her child has epilepsy, so it's not like she needs an assessment of need. She needs supports because she's starting school, and the school needs to know what they are supposed to be doing, and she can't get a reply from the CDN. In relation uh, to uh, no front door or the right front door, it's called the NAP, it's the National Access Policy, it's a HSC policy document. I will say, under the leadership of Bernard Gloucester, that I have seen huge improvements with actually where primary health um, incomes, and acute and disabilities, they are talking to each other, they're not working in silo. Now, Granted, there's variances across the country. There's some working really, really well, and others could do with improvement. But that policy is being rolled out and being totally understood at a senior level and is filtering all the way down. In relation to the recruitment or attraction, absolutely. And I spoke earlier on today in relation to the excellent programme in, in social care um, that was um, um, la launched in Cork in the last month, um, where Deferris and Minister O'Donovan where we actually are seeing 30 odd students being taken place on the apprenticeship programme. I would really like to see that stepped up now into the OTs, physios uh, and speech and language. Earn and learn and as part of a pathway um, through education, but actually also providing the proper clinical governance. It is a way of doing, uh, retracting and retaining. Perfect. 